Hi, everyone, and thank you for joining. Um, today, we'll be talking about UX frameworks and different strategies that we use at VMware. I'm a senior UX manager there in, uh, in the lead of our UX design team. And I really hope that today's session uh, will be very productive and, and productive and, and useful for you. Um, I want to share VMware's colleague experience journey as we build our first employee facing team in VMware with focus on technology enablement, process improvements and future of work practices. It's a five year journey uh, that included many ups and downs, a lot of lessons learned and a lot of different restructurings and strategy readjustments that aim to ensure this newly built colleague experience framework is effectively and efficiently supporting the cross business unit and organizational success. Some of the topics we'll cover today. What is our approach to colleague experience at VMware? What are some of the domains that we have identified and um, created and how we allocate resources accordingly? What is our organizational structure and how it's built to support this transformational effort that is happening within VMware, as well as some roles, responsibilities, and some different strategies um, around process and how we evaluate uh, the impact of our work. First, I'll start very briefly with what employee experience is. By definition, this, um, this term um, encapsulates what people uh, encounter and observe over the course of their tenure at an organization. Some professionals still think of employee and colleague experience as a term very specific to human resources, which for us is not true. Colleague experience for VMware is way more complex, and we define it as every employee touch point with technology, process, physical experience, policies, and even interactions with other um, employees. So how people collaborate synchronously or asynchronously, how they uh, communicate, how they set up their home office stations, environments, etc. Those are all elements for colleague experience um, and input experience for us. And we believe that every colleague experience and even customer experience mature organization needs to tackle at a certain point um, of its journey. Data shows that investment in colleague experience has significant impact on innovation, customer satisfaction and revenue. Um, and with that, more and more companies are investing a lot of resources and realizing how great workplace experience impact their businesses. For VMware, as I already mentioned, this journey started um, about five years ago, and um, it started as an IT-oriented and IT-specific uh, focused colleague experience team. Initially, the scope of our work was to create custom-built solutions for IT and engineers uh, and to evaluate the technology experience at the company. Of course, this included improving productivity for IT teams, um, kind of, you know, automating a lot of the manual work that was happening. Uh, but it was, again, very IT specific and IT focused. As we got more traction and visibility across the company, our focus expanded and we began to engage in a lot of foundational research and design efforts that aim to support the business transformation that was happening um, across the company. And I'll talk a little bit about this in the following slides. In terms of our pro, uh, approach to colleague experience, we believe that um, this is the foundation um, in terms of why we're successful at this uh, space, because this approach helps us ensure we're making data and research driven decisions while also focusing on the human factor and empathy building across the company. We believe this is uh, very important because we are a very big technology company. Uh, so for us, it's very easy to jump to technology and, and kind of let the technology dictate the solution instead of focusing on the actual need or problem we are trying to solve. So this is why we are very, um, we have a very colleague first mindset. We have empathy as our key driver and we leverage methodologies such as design thinking, for example. In terms of our structure, uh, we are part of the Worldwide Operations Organization, which is relatively newly built organization within VMware. Uh, we use a centralized organizational model where all UX team members report to a UX manager. And UX designers and researchers work on various products and efforts as needed, acting as consultants to um, the rest of the organization and the rest of the business units, because there are a lot of them, as you can imagine, for a 40,000 um, employee organization. 
the advantages that come with this structure um, are a lot. Uh, first, this agency model uh, gives us a lot of visibility across many different areas of the business. Uh, and this, of course, increases not only how our work is perceived, but also the impact of our work, because we can actually contribute to different pieces of the puzzle. We have the opportunity to engage with senior leaders and influence decision in relation to all aspects of colleague experience, HR, IT, sales productivity, marketing, et cetera, et cetera. This inevitably impacts the team as we are provided with many different opportunities for growth within each space, domain, or even within different products. And of course, this also ensures um, our designers and researchers could be allocated to a project or um, a domain based on their expertise or um, their particular interest. VMware is in the midst of a company cultural transformation. Um, and as we're currently being um, acquired by Broadcom, this is a very expensive deal. I assume some of you have heard about, hopefully most of you have heard about this. And we're also in the same time going through a subscription and SaaS transformation that predates uh, the Broadcom acquisition news. So uh, with all of those changes happening at the same time, uh, a lot of challenges um, are coming our way and we need to adjust and make sure we are operating in a way to support the different business transformation um, efforts that are happening across the, the business units. So for that reason, we have defined the so-called domains um, or you can call them spaces. Uh, for us, those are HR, subscription and SaaS, commerce, experience, IT support and experience, uh, future of work, and work practices and um, our process related activities. Of course, those processes are um, oriented around HR onboarding, um, et cetera, et cetera. And I'll briefly um, cover this as well. In terms of our HR and um, technology, experience in the working out within that domain. Um, our partners play a crucial role in enabling VMware leaders and employees to navigate successfully through VMware's transformation. Um, and our goal there is to really provide timely and relevant solutions for our colleagues to drive business outcomes. And of course, this means uh, not only streamlining different processes, but also automating a lot of the manual work and improving self-service and personalized experiences for HR staff and employees. In terms of our subscription and SaaS commerce experience, I would say that this is probably the biggest priority for our team and for the company right now. VMware is going faster to the future with an increased focus on moving the company and our customers and partners to a subscription model um, of working. This means that we are working with our product management and development partners and of course our business partners to simplify, standardize and automate SaaS business processes, policies and systems. And where our focus really is in implementing a holistic offer to cash ecosystem uh, to research UX strategy and design support across all the different product spaces and slim ways within subscription and SaaS space. Of course, we're continuously supporting our IT partners by delivering new capabilities and improving existing um, experiences in relation to our ticketing system, intranet, chat support, um, and many more productivity related solutions that we have um, within VMware. I already mentioned that um, you know, colleague experience within VMware is uniquely set up uh, in terms of the scope of our work. Our workplace and future of work efforts are one of those areas that are very interesting. And uh, our research team is driving remarkable work there, ensuring that the company is adopting um, best activity-based working practices, remote work practices, as well as adopting new technology um, such as VR and AR, and we're exploring different use cases for those new technologies coming in. Um, of course, in terms of continuous improvement of our processes, this is a huge um, area of focus for us. And it is something that has continually um, impacted our colleagues' well-being, retention, um, and of course, indirectly impacting cost savings um, around improved productivity or um, you know, the time needed for a new person to, to onboard. 
In order for us to effectively tackle the specific challenges for each domains, because as you saw, they're all very different and uh, just very, very, very specific. We have designed a variety of different approaches and strategies and frameworks that we leverage in order to drive these transformational efforts. Our organizational structure is one of those um, strategies that we have and how we allocate resources is, I would say, very, very unique. It's not definitely something that you haven't seen or won't be uh, seeing in the future. Uh, but I would say that we have a very mature UX structure um, and very interesting way of allocating resources. Currently, we have five different sub teams or different fields and expertises. We have UX strategy, UX operations, UX content and communications, UX design, and UX research. All designer strategies and researchers are embedded within different spaces. So, for example, you can have a strategist, designer, and researcher uh, working on subscription and SaaS domain or uh, within an HR domain. UX strategy is um, a very interesting team. It is a relatively new one, uh, and I'll speak a little bit about the role itself in a bit. Uh, but pretty much this team consists of um, experienced senior UX professionals that are problem space experts, and they oversee work for a specific domain or subdomain. Um, and they help us better collaborate with our cross-functional uh, stakeholders within that domain. Design operations or design ops, I assume this is a term that you know, most of you are familiar with. This is a group that supports um, and works with our UX design and research managers to address different challenges in relation to workflows, processes, the quality and impact of our work, and also how we collaborate and align internally. UX content and communications and design and research, I assume those roles and teams are very straightforward in terms of um, responsibilities. Uh, but I'll again go over some of those in a bit. And what is even more interesting in how those roles collaborate together, uh, which I feel like is an opportunity for a lot of companies to leverage and improve the quality of the work that is being delivered. Trying to change my swipe. Okay, having a little bit of technical challenges here. Um, very briefly about the different roles that we have and how they differentiate, uh, because I think there's a lot of value in, in how we define those roles and how they interact with each other. The UX strategist role is a relatively new role within VMware, and I would say in the UX field in general. This uh, particular, um, it's an individual contributor role. So um, this is really a problem space expert focusing on discovering foundational work for a specific domain. The UX strategist engage in, engages and collaborates with product owners and product managers to plan and prioritize UX efforts within a domain space or a specific product within a domain. Those people lead strategy and vision conversations with product and even service owners in some instances and manage stakeholder relationships with it within that space. Of course, they also work on things like prioritization, planning, documentation uh, to ensure that the UX work is consistent and is embedded um, in the best way possible in terms of the product development lifecycle. The UX architect role um, it's a role that is very similar to the UX strategist roles, uh, role, and I believe in some companies, it might even be the same role. Uh, within VMware, however, uh, the UX architect role is a more of a strategic role in terms of end-to-end -end experience within a domain. So this person actually is engaged across all related domain spaces and products to ensure there is a holistic approach to the problem solving in terms of solutions, research, approach, etc. They work directly with leadership and decision makers to get buy-in and to ensure UX practices are supported um, across the business and from the top down. And much like the strategies, architects work to ensure UX is embedded and processes are followed by the product management and development group, uh, but more at the high level um, end. UX and UX design and research managers, those are people manager roles. Um, I don't think there are you know, any big differences in terms of what um, UX design and research managers do within VMware. Uh, but for us, a big focus for these roles is ensuring that there is alignment between 
uh, the company objectives, the business, uh, the business objectives, and also our internal um, efforts and what are the different work that is being delivered and how it connects to the wider picture, pretty much. Of course, those people are um, leading hiring, onboarding, skill diversification for, um, for the design and research team, and are allocating um, resources accordingly based on expertise, interest, and uh, bandwidth. The UX subject matter experts is another role that we have defined within VMware as a way to enable our uh, team members to grow uh, in a way that they don't feel obligated to become people managers because I think this is a struggle in, in our community. In order to grow, you have to become a manager, which is not true for our colleague experience team at VMware. And um, the UX subject matter experts or leads are usually domain experts or um, field experts that uh, focus on very specific um, methodology or they're very um, engaged in a specific um, UX, let's say, field or, or focus area. For example, UX accessibility lead, mobile experience lead, UX discovery lead. They deliver a variety of materials and are responsible to ensure consistency and quality across the different spaces, domains, and products. And some of the common activities that they engage in uh, is creating uh, different knowledge sharing sessions, documentations, enablement materials, etc. The design operations lead, I already briefly um, talked about this, but those are uh, professionals that continue to support the wider design and research group to improve workflows, processes, and to ensure cooperation and alignment uh, practices are followed. They work on assets, um, asset management, um, enabling our team in terms of tool sets, uh, and of course, even communicating some of our success stories alongside our um, UX design and research managers. And UX designers, UX researchers, and UX content specialists, I think those are very straightforward. Um, and what is interesting or different, I would say, for our research group is the fact that our uh, researchers are uh, very heavily focused on foundational research, which means complex research activities that aim to map the end-to-end -end experience and uh, the very complex ecosystem within VMware. So you will rarely see our researchers actually conduct usability testing. This is something that usually a lot of our UX designers also do. But of course, our research team is continuously supporting those efforts as well. Some of the cons that come with our structure and how we operate and how are we tackling those challenges. Of course, um, within VMware, we have a lot of different uh, efforts, but with that comes a lot of inconsistency and a lot of alignment challenges, both internally for our team, but also cross-functionally um, and um, cross-business unit, uh, in a cross-business unit aspect. Uh, to fight this alignment and standard challenges, we have created a unified UX process that we apply consistently across the different domains and product spaces. And um, I will walk you through that process. And um, what is very interesting is how UX strategy, UX design, and UX research actually work together within that process. We have things like a shared repository, design system, libraries with assets such as icons, images, non-standard UI components that are not necessarily part of our design system, as well as clearly defined quality standards and UX checklists. And all of those different um, strategies and, and uh, tools really help us stay aligned, even though in some instances we might not be constantly communicating with each other, meaning HR uh, designers and research or researchers within the HR domain might not be actively engaging with the researchers and designers um, across the subscription and SaaS domain. We also have a lot of design rituals. Uh, we invest a lot of time uh, on team enablement, knowledge sharing sessions, and um, different things, or even um, our UX um, review meeting that, is, that runs weekly, where all teammates can present their work and receive design critique and feedback, as well as quarterly uh, retrospectives where we reflect on work challenges we've had during the past three months. Um, and we use that time to really iterate on our goals, but to also create better focus for the team moving forward. 
Another um, con uh, that, that comes with our structure is slow growth for individuals. And uh, I think this is true for most complex environments where you have very diverse type of products or projects um, or domains. Thankfully, we've been lucky enough and thoughtful enough to create um, a very straightforward professional level requirements, individual development plans and specialization options. Uh, the UX uh, subject matter expert is one of those uh, specialization options that really allows our individual contributors to grow as individual contributors, as, as, as experts, um, instead of them uh, feeling obligated to go into a management uh, track. We also support um, our um, teammates by providing regular career conversations and executing skill set diversification exercises. This is both on individual level, uh, but also on team level to make sure that we're informing our hiring strategy as well. Last but not least, bureaucracy. Uh, and I think this is part of each large enterprise, um, especially enterprises that are going through um, you know, big transformations where they're trying to change um, the mindset and the culture. And VMware is no different. Even though we are innovation-driven company and very technical savvy company for a 40,000 employee organization, we have many levels of management and leadership to support the different, um, different functional groups. This means that we need to be mindful of that and we need to be very flexible in order to accommodate for, um, for the different needs and use cases within each business unit. And we also need to apply tactical approaches and, and strategies uh, but also keep in mind our long-term vision um, as our North Star. Moving forward with our uh, co colleague experience uh, process map, uh, I mentioned that our process is one of our strategies to uh, that we leverage to ensure high quality of our work and consistency across the different products and uh, domains. Our process, I would say, is um, quite standard. We start with a discovery uh, phase, and then we move to um, opportunity framing, ideation, validation. And those are very, uh, I would say, broken down into very like detailed and smaller phases just to make sure we are consistently communicating with our cross-functional uh, collaborators, uh, collaborators, and they really understand what is happening with it within each um, stage of the process. As I mentioned, uh, what is interesting is how UX research, UX strategy, and UX design come together to support the end-to-end -end, um, UX process with a narrow view and scope at different stages, but also um, ensuring that those different fields are aligned uh, throughout the whole process. So UX strategy uh, is highly engaged in the initial discovery and opportunity framing uh, phases, as well as the MVP definition and prioritization work that is happening uh, with the product management and development group. Uh, after that, they take on more of a governance and alignment role to ensure that the work that is delivering uh, that is being delivered is, um, you know, kind of meeting the initial um, requirements that were defined and that is meeting our quality standards as well. And of course, that we're saving, saving um, we're solving the, the right problem. UX research um, supports UX strategy in the early process with a lot of explorational research, hypothesis definition, definition of product personas, etc. And after that, they support the design group um, at the later stages with some usability testing, validation, and variety of different methods and frameworks to gather feedback and user sentiment. Design starts actively contributing um, at the ideation phase and is engaged throughout the whole process and, of course, continuously working with an iterative approach to deliver new functionalities and improve the, um, the, the already built experiences for the specific tool. Moving forward with our evaluation framework, which is uh, also something that I would say is very unique about colleague experience at VMware. Um, and I think this is an approach that can be leveraged not only for colleague experience teams, but also for um, product organizations as well. We have four different frameworks that allow us to have a very holistic view um, of the work that is being delivered and what is the impact 
for our colleagues and for the business. Starting with a technology experience survey, um, or as we call it, TESS. It is a biannual survey on technology satisfaction that serves as a post check on perceived value and sentiment um, on IT, business, meaning sales, HR, etc., and other internal tools and systems and process within VMware. This really shows the overall sentiment uh, view at the categorical level, which means that we don't really um, have data that is showing what an application or system or process is driving a specific result. Uh, and it's really an um, overaching measurement of colleague experience held for us. Whereas the next framework, which is our experience scorecard, um, the experience scorecard is focused on a specific application. This is a custom built evaluation framework um, that was um, designed by our research team. And it really focuses on several different key um, evaluation variables. When considered together, um, they inform a robust and comp uh, comprehensive um, view and evaluation of the specific product or system we're evaluating. This method really leverages um, a lot of different um, methodologies such as user feedback, observation, analytics, in tandem of each other to create a cohesive, uh, cohesive data narrative to measure um, the measure the UX success of the specific product. And I would say it's very customizable. Uh, so it can ensure that we can meet our specific domains and specific product um, use cases and needs. The foundational research work uh, that our research team um, delivers consistently, and this is an ongoing effort for us, it's not really project or product um, driven. Here we use qualitative and quantitative uh, research methodologies to understand and map complex business and service ecosystems to identify different challenges within those ecosystems and to ensure that we're informed and also our partners are informed about any process frictions that impact colleague productivity or um, the business success within the different domains. This is my opinion is where our strength really lies uh, because this really allows us to look at our uh, VMR ecosystem holistically and understand the deep underlying issues that um, decrease the quality productivity and hurts the business operations. In terms of tracking our impact and um, kind of mapping our work to the organizational objectives. We have, we have adopted the uh, objective, objectives and key results methodology. Uh, and we can probably have a separate uh, discussion around that uh, because how OKRs are applied for UX is a very interesting topic to me. Uh, but OKRs really allow us to um, understand how our work connects to the bigger picture. This evaluation form, uh, frameworks ensure that we have transparency and accountability across the different UX fields and across the different domains. And also they help us to um, you know, keep us honest and unbiased as we deliver and measure experiences across um, the different business units for VMware. Uh, because it's very easy to um, you know, become biased as, as UX designers, as UX researchers. We need to ensure that we have objective way to measure uh, the success of our work. And to kind of wrap up uh, the session today, uh, I want to speak a little bit about the impact of our work and how the frameworks and approaches that we discussed today um, have successfully helped us transform how solutions uh, in, both in terms of technology, by the way, and in terms of process um, are being delivered within VMware. Before adopting a human-centered design approach, the organization really struggled with cumbersome evaluation of internal tools and processes. And there were a lot of organizational silos and inconsistent approach to problem solving in general. Research and data uh, were very fragmented, um, fragmented and not leveraged uh, in what I would say in any way, shape or form. And that work between the different business units uh, was lacking. As we applied our UX strategy framework, foundational research, and focused a lot on different UX maturity and um, UX awareness efforts, we were able to really build a horizontal view and end-to-end -end holistic approach in terms of how colleague experiencing is delivered um, 
at VMware. We now have a multi-layer experience framework. Um, we have very, um, I would say, improved dialogue and uh, cross-team and cross-business unit collaboration that is happening. And we also have a multi-layered experience framework that helps us solve very complex business challenges for our colleagues and for our partners uh, that help us um, deliver on our business goals um, as a company. Of course, a lot of that work is impacting well-being of our colleagues, job satisfaction and retention, as well as um, cost savings in relation to the increased productivity we provide to um, our colleagues. I really hope that um, all of this uh, information uh, will be helpful for you as you try to improve colleague experiences or even um, experiences with your product at your company. Um, and I'll be happy to answer any, any questions that came up during the conversation. So thank you very much, Karina. That, that was really interesting for me because um, usually you think of UX as being the end customer fate focus. So it's really interesting to look at it from the, the angle of being internally focused. So thank you for sharing that. Um, we probably, there are people might be typing in their questions right now, but we have run over time. So I have one or two questions that I'd love to ask you, and I'll put them into the Slack channel that um, I've invited you to. So if you could answer them in there, that would be fantastic. Absolutely. Absolutely. But, um, thank you so much. But Thank you very much for sharing.